Well, we're in the very city center now and uh, now I'd like to tell you the best known story of our city. It's the story of the master draft. That's the story how Rothenburg was saved by a tricker. <laughs> well, that's a story that took place in the 30-year war. Do you have any ideas how long the 30-year war was? <laughs> okay, any ideas when it was? <laughs> between 1618 oh. and 1648. Who was fighting in this war? Everybody. <laughs> it was a big Calvinist. European war, almost everybody yeah, was involved. Everyone. And well, it was a religious war between Protestants and Catholics. Well, at least that's what they told people in those days. But if we have a closer look, we will probably see it was not about religion. Most wars are about, not about religion, they're about money, power, politics, land. And I think it's quite obvious that the 30 year war was not about religion, because in this war, the Catholic French were fighting on the Protestant side. <laughs> now, well, the French, they had a problem with their neighbor. It was the Spanish king. And the Spanish king, he was the brother-in-law of the Catholic German emperor. And the enemy of my enemy is my friend. So they were supporting the Protestant side. And the 30-year war, it was the worst disaster we ever had in our German history. In this war, Germany lost about 50% of the total population. In some areas, even up to 80%. Big landscapes were almost free of people after this war. And as you can imagine, most people didn't lose their lives in military action on the battlefield. Though, either they starved because the soldiers were plundering everything, or they burned the fields down so the enemy couldn't get the food, or people they died of infections and diseases the soldiers brought into their cities. And, um, well, it was about the middle of this horrible war. It was fall 1631. It was exactly October 31st, the Reformation Day. And you can imagine, this was an important celebration here for our Protestant city. And well, ironically, just at this day, there was a Catholic general. His name was Tilly, with a big army here in the area. General Tilly, he was the commander-in-chief of the Catholic troops. And well, first, he had no plans with Rothenburg. He didn't want to attack us. But in this year, we had an early winter. And you can imagine, after snowfall and rain in fall already, the streets, they were in bad condition, muddy roads. So Tilly couldn't proceed anymore. The soldiers were freezing, and they were hungry. So he needed an accommodation for them for the winter time. But well, there was only one bigger city close by to accommodate them all. And it was bad luck for us, it was our city, Rothenburg. So Tilly, he sent us a messenger, and a message he sent us, it was very simple. His message was just, <laughs> surrender and open the gates. But of course we knew exactly what he did with the Protestant city of Magdeburg, just half a year before that. Magdeburg was completely destroyed, 20,000 people lost their lives. It was the worst battle in this war. So you can imagine, we didn't surrender to a cruel general like that. Now we decided to trust in our walls and then we bravely defended our city for two days and nights. But at the third day, one of our defenders, he walked into the powder storage with a torchlight in his hands. And as you can imagine, gunpowder and fire don't mix. Yeah. Well, we couldn't ask him why he did it. But uh, there was an explosion, our walls were damaged, and then we finally had to surrender. And well, so far it's historic facts. Now we start with the story, the story of the master draft. Of course, we try to make the best out of this miserable situation. And we welcomed the general. We welcomed him with the biggest glass of wine we had in our city, holding 13 local wine measurements. In our two-day system, that's 3.25 liters. That's almost a gallon. Well, that's even for us Germans, a decent-sized glass. <laughs> and Tilly, he was very impressed when he saw this glass. And after the first negotiations, he took the welcome sip. But we know Tilly. He was usually not drinking alcohol, which means he was drunk immediately. And then Tilly offered our city a bet. If one of you guys can finish this class in one go, we will not destroy your city. Well, that's a pretty responsible duty, isn't it? <laughs> if you have to save a city. So you need an important person to take care of. Maybe, some, maybe, maybe somebody who's experienced. <laughs> in our city, we call that the mayor. <laughs> a former mayor, a guy called George Lush, he said, let's give it a try, there's nothing to lose. And if you look around, you can see our city is not destroyed. Obviously, he saved us. Then he walked back home, slept three nights and days. <laughs> well, now we'll go back to historic facts. Lush, in those days, he reached the age of 80. Well, we talked about average life expectation already. He was just about 40 years. So he was unbelievable, which obviously means if you're drinking lots of local wine, it's pretty good for your health. Okay. <laughs> but well, please don't try to repeat a master draft. That's definitely not recommended. Um, some of our guests tried it already, and one Canadian almost finished the glass. But then we finally had to take him into the hospital. 
alcohol poisoning. Yeah. Well, that's a good story, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. But there's one little problem. It's not true. It's not true. <laughs> the master draft never ever happened. This story was rich, written exactly 129 years ago for Historic Festival. We still show that sometimes in the town hall. And well, interesting wise, the story was written by a glassmaker. <laughs> The truth was much easier. After we surrendered, well, so far it was historic facts, but after we surrendered, we paid a lot of money not to be destroyed. And as you can imagine, this week in Rothenburg a lot, and our city was taken twice again in this war, by the way, by Catholic and Protestant troops. And it didn't make a difference anymore. And we always paid. So by the end of this war, our city was broke, broke poor, and bankrupt. And well, you still can see that today as well. If you just look around. Well, after the 30-year war, there was no money in our city for any changes. There was no money for any new buildings. Our city was preserved by poverty. Well, that was bad for people in those days, but it's a big benefit today. Because that's the reason you are here. <laughs> and you probably recognized it already, you're not the only guests in town. <laughs> in a year, Rothenburg has more than 2 million visitors. That's quite a lot for a small town with just 11,000 citizens. Wow. We have about 3,500 hotel beds here in town, and one third of our income is directly by our visitors. So without you, we couldn't survive. So we are very thankful that you're here to visit us. Okay, and uh, if you now want to look up at this building, uh, you'll see that in a few seconds, the two windows to the left and to the right of the big log will open. And then you can see the two main characters of the story I just told you. Um, on the left window, you still, uh, you'll see General Tilly, and on the right window, you'll see Mayor Nush with his big glass in his hands. And after a few seconds, he'll lift this glass, he'll drink out of this glass, and then he'll finally empty the glass. It's happening very slowly, but it's a big, heavy glass. And he's doing it eight times a day, that's quite a challenge. <laughs> and, um, well, as soon as we saw that, we will move, leave the crowd here on the Market Square and go to a more quiet place. Hopefully. What are the times? Sorry? Are these the coffins? Well, that's not real persons, yeah. Well, that's wood carving. That's wood carving. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Otherwise, I would have applied for this job already. <laughs> <laughs> what are the times that these are? Um, always uh, uh, during daytime between 11 and 3, and in the evenings between 8 and 10. Yes, hourly. Full, full hour, under full hour. It's definitely no problem to find postcards here in town. Okay, and well, that's it already. It's not becoming more spectacular now. <laughs> and actually, if you'd like to uh, improve your life expectancy by having a few glasses of local wine, there is a wine fest just here on the next square. So in case uh, you want to have a glass or two after our tour, that's oh, probably okay. a nice thing for the evening to do. Okay. So give some of our local wines a try. Okay, and now please follow me this way.